Good afternoon, everyone, especially to our educators in Malaysia. My name is Imran, and I'm from Team at Puzzle. We are so grateful that you chose to spend your afternoon with us today. And before we get started proper, uh, let me just share with you what I do. So my role is to train teachers and schools. In Malaysia, in Singapore, in the Philippines, basically, I look after the Asia-Pacific region. In fact, just a few weeks ago, I was in Malaysia. We went around a few schools. I was in Monkiara, I was in Damansara, and I had a great time visiting some of the schools there, talking to the teachers and showing them how they can enhance their classroom teaching and learning with Edpuzzle. So I'm not here alone. I'm here with my colleague and friend, May. And uh, before I hand it over to her to introduce herself, let me just wish those of you who are fasting today, Salam Ramadan and Salamat Berpuasa. Over to you, May. Thanks, Imran. Hi, everyone. Good afternoon. Selamat petang. Um, I am May, Country Manager for Malaysia in Ad Puzzle. And um, while Imran works with the community in APEC, I work specifically with schools and teachers here in Malaysia, um, particularly in terms of adoption of Ad Puzzle. So it's nice to see so many familiar uh, faces, familiar names, if I can say that this afternoon. Thank you very much for joining us in our first um, country-specific Malaysia at Puzzle Live uh, this afternoon. So before we start, let me uh, before we introduce Dr. Faisal, let me share um, some pointers here. Okay, um, while you are set, setting in, um, if you just join us, please um, take some time to share with us a bit about yourself. Uh, where are you tuning in from? Um, please use the chat box, and then. Um, there is uh, there will be a q and a session at the end of dr faisal's presentation so if you would like to ask questions um you can raise your hand and we will unmute you alternatively you can also use the chat box all right that's it um let's bring in dr faisal so you might be wondering who is dr faisal and uh what is he gonna share with us so i'm gonna share with you his history his role so that you have a better idea of his experience and where it's coming from so Dr. Muhammad Faisal Farish is the unit head of language and technology at the English Language Teaching Center or ELTC in Malaysia. And ELTC is an agency under the Ministry of Education Malaysia. Dr. Faisal is an experienced educator and researcher with a passion for language teaching and learning and has developed his skills and expertise in the e-learning industry. He has been using Adpuzzle since 2015. That is super long ago. Adpuzzle was founded in 2014, if I'm not wrong. So he was uh, with Adpuzzle. He's been using Adpuzzle almost since the beginning. And today, as the title of the webinar suggests, Dr. Faisal will be sharing with us interesting ideas on applying flipped learning using Adpuzzle in your classrooms. So Dr. Faisal, welcome. And thank you for joining us today. Okay, thank you, Imran. Uh, so uh, I also would like to thank you for the nice introduction just now. And also for the audience, thank you for taking your time <coughs> to attend uh, the webinar. Yeah. So uh, I think um, Imran has uh, exposed a lot about me just now. So I just want to share <laughs> awesome. something uh, about what I had done uh, a few weeks ago. Yeah. Uh, two weeks ago, uh, my team and I <clears throat> conducted workshops with two schools here in Seremban. And uh, it was a, an edutech workshop, I would say, under School Transformation Program 2025, or we here we call it uh, TS25. Uh, for half, one and a half hours, we introduced flipped learning approach to the teachers, and then we let them experience uh, students' role in uh, using a puzzle. Uh, they were very excited and willing to explore how to create teaching and learning materials by using Edpuzzle. They are looking forward um, to uh, meet to meet again, and we have we'll have another workshop with them later. Uh, so I think that's enough about me. <laughs> so so you were just conducting workshops uh, regarding Edpuzzle with some teachers just yeah. just very recently, and uh, yeah. I'm sure our teachers here. Uh, excited to learn more about how they can use a puzzle for themselves. Uh, before we get started with the sharing and the presentation, I always like to start off with a small game. 
Uh, so, Dr. Faisal, have you ever played this game called Two Truths and One Lie? Uh, yeah, I'm quite familiar with that game. I've oh, you're quite familiar. Awesome. awesome. So, <laughs> just in case uh, some of our attendees have never played this game before, here's mm -hmm. how it works. Uh, May and I are going to ask Dr. Faisal to share with us three statements. So, he's going to mention statement one, statement two, and statement three. Uh, one of them is going to be a lie. It's going to be an untruth, right? But we are going to guess which one of the three statements is not true, right? May will guess and I will guess as well. And then at the end of it, Dr. Faisal will share which one is actually the statement that is not true. Okay, so Dr. Faisal, go ahead. Give us your three statements and then we're going to take a guess. Okay, uh, two truths and one lie, yeah? That's right. Mm. Okay, the first statement will be um, I have a pet iguana. Uh, second one will be uh, I've just uh, launched, oh, so sorry, published, eh, published uh, an ebook titled uh, Teaching with uh, Chatbots. And the third one is I've been using AdPuzzle since 2015. <laughs> I think you're making it too easy for us, I think. Yes, I think right. So. <laughs> <laughs> okay. uh, May, so do you want to go would, first? Do you want to guess? I would say that um, because I know that you published, you recently published an ebook uh, with ChatGPT. Um, I, I, so so I, I think that's true. And um, you have been using AdPuzzle since 2015, so that's very obvious. So I think the lie here would be um, the pet iguana. Well, what um, <laughs> okay, so my first instinct would be to guess that the first one is a lie because uh, if I'm not wrong here, I, I'm, in, I'm based in Singapore. Uh, if I'm not wrong, it's illegal to keep an iguana as a pet. Uh, but I know people who keep all sorts of things, spiders, and I even used to know someone who kept a snake. So, you know, I, you know it's, it's one of those things. Um, I might actually say it's a second one. I think you did publish an ebook but I think it's not about chatbots. I think it's about something else, right? So what about it? Which one is the lie, Dr. Faisal? Okay, the, actually the lie is the first one. I have ah. a pet iguana, <laughs> yeah, because actually I have uh, three pet cats. Yeah. Ah, okay. Mm, three pet cats. And um, yeah, it's uh, true that I've just recently published an ebook, uh, but it's the title, uh, the one that I said just now is, is quite short, but the long title is Teaching with Chatbots, Exploring the Possibilities of ChatGPT uh, in ESL Classroom. And also the third one is uh, correct. I've uh, been uh, using at Puzzle since 2015. All right, okay. that's cool. So hopefully we get to have a copy of your ebook uh, in the near future. Uh, shall we go ahead and talk about flipped learning and while Dr. Faisal is uh, sharing with us, I'm going to issue a quick poll to our attendees. So educators, friends, uh, there's going to be a quick poll which is on the screen. And uh, feel free to answer the poll as the sharing is going on. So Dr. Faisal, over to you. Go ahead. Okay. Thank you, Imran. Uh, again, assalamualaikum and a very uh, good afternoon to everyone, uh, to everyone joining us today. And it is an absolute pleasure to me to be here. And I want to uh, extend uh, the, the, the gratitude again to uh, Puzzle team for giving me the opportunity to speak in this webinar. Yeah? Okay, I think I have introduced myself. Uh, I'm not going to do that again. And let's proceed to the uh, presentation. And the title that I have given to my presentation is Empowering uh, Back to School Week with AdPuzzle for uh, flipped learning. Okay, this is the first slide. Okay, the terminology, if you can see on the slide there, uh, the terminology flipped learning. Yeah, uh, I put there, what is flipped learning? Actually, the, uh, there are, there's another one, uh, the, there's another one called flipped classroom as well, and uh, it's quite popular. But uh, the terminology of uh, flipped learning and flipped classroom actually had been, uh, used interchangeably in uh, literature without clear uh, distinctions. And I myself, 
when I uh, explain what is approach, I also use uh, both terms interchangeably. Yeah, and then um, uh, whatever term we choose to use in both settings, we can say that the focus is on students, where students are able to make their own decisions uh, on how to learn class materials while giving the lesson purpose and understanding its importance in, in the, the real world. So let me uh, start by telling what flip learning is. Uh, flip learning is unlike traditional uh, teaching models. Yeah? Traditional teaching models means uh, the teacher lectures in class and assigns homework for students to uh, complete at home. And for information, flipped learning actually reverses this process. Yeah? In a flipped learning context, students, they watch video lectures or complete other digital materials at home. And this uh, session actually allows them to learn at their own pace and freeze up class time for more uh, engaging and interacting activities in sorry interactive activities yeah and when this happens the extra time for face to face session class uh, time they will have uh, uh, what we call that they can have a collaborative projects discussions and hands on activities and this means that the teacher acts more as a facilitator rather than the main source of information or in short i would say uh, teacher will be guide, uh, not by guide by the side. Sorry, teacher will be a guide by the side rather than the common uh, role of a sage on the stage. Yeah. So this approach uh, actually encourages students to become more active and responsible in their own learning. And when students are working together uh, in class, teachers can expect students to uh, share their ideas and learn from one another. And this can lead to uh, what we call that uh, deeper understanding and, and uh, retention of the uh, materials. So, in flipped learning approach, teachers usually create their own video content. And after that, they provide access to the video outside of the classroom. Perhaps they will uh, post it on YouTube and so on. And as I mentioned earlier, this approach allows students to learn the content beforehand. Yeah, so they, they learn uh, the content at home beforehand. And in face-to-face -face session, they will have ample time for uh, what we call that uh, collaborative and hands-on activities. So in order to have meaningful video watching session, yeah, uh, in the, the flip learning actually uh, more uh, necessitates instructing students in the art of uh, video viewing. Students must learn on how to watch videos. Yeah, some uh, would argue that it is unnecessary to teaching the kids to uh, watch videos because they already possess that skill. They uh, always go to uh, watch video, uh, watch movies. Yeah? Uh, but it is important to remember that going to the movies is not uh, the same as watching an educational video uh, prepared by teachers. Yeah. So I would say that um, how to engage with uh, video content in a way that prompts critical thinking and introspection is a skill that must be taught in, implementer, in, in implementing uh, flip learning. Uh, if we say watching educational videos is different uh, uh, from watching movies, uh, that means we as teachers need to find ways of doing that. And the question is, is there any digital tool which can assist us teachers to make the videos we create to be more engaging? Okay. To me, the answer is yes, as on the screen. Yeah. Okay. In order to provide meaningful video uh, watching session, teachers need to find appropriate digital tools. Yeah? Ladies and gentlemen. And uh, at Puzzle, to me, it's a good digital tools that can support this purpose. So how does Edpuzzle support flip learning? Okay. This is based on my own experience eh? uh, doing training. Yeah? Edpuzzle uh, can support video watching session in flip learning. Uh, video content can be delivered in a uh, more meaningful way where questions are inserted at a selected video frame to test a student's understanding. 
and uh, yeah, to test their understanding. And I will elaborate more on this on the next slide. Okay, let's take a look at this uh, Bloom's device taxonomy. Okay, this infographic shows how video watching session with Edpuzzle caters the lower order thinking skills of uh, Bloom's revised taxonomy, which is remembering and understanding. Yeah? So when this happens, classroom face-to-face -face time is reserved uh, for higher order thinking skills or HOTS in short, yeah? applying and analyzing, evaluating and creating those are skills uh, we call higher order thinking skills and and very much um, and the activity will be very much uh, student centered and with the help of Edpuzzle, flip learning can be a powerful tool for uh, promoting uh, higher order thinking skills in students because video watching session at home is not an ordinary video watching but reflective and meaningful uh, for the class time teachers can promote critical thinking or analysis and also problem solving kind of activities. For example, uh, okay, teachers might take advantage of class time by encouraging students to conduct uh, conversations on the content based on the video that they have watched. Uh, so they bring whatever they have learned at home into the classroom and they discuss about it. As they evaluate and debate the topic, students can improve their communication and uh, critical critical thinking skills. And also teachers can assist uh, students develop their problem solving and creativity skills uh, by uh, perhaps assigning open-ended projects that uh, encourage uh, students to employ uh, hard skills to solve issues or create something new. Creating is the highest uh, the, uh, in the hierarchy for, of uh, Bloom's revised taxonomy. Yeah? So all this cover the thinking skills according to uh, Bloom's uh, revised taxonomy. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, at puzzle to me um, is more than just uh, you say run of the mill video editing tool. With its array of variable features, it empowers teachers to design. Uh, dynamic and interactive lessons that truly engage their students. So in particular, Edpuzzle offers a host of tools and options that make it an excellent choice for teachers looking to adopt a flip learning model. So if you are considering flipping your lessons, you'll be pleased to know that Edpuzzle uh, makes it easy to get started yeah, with a flip learning approach. Okay, here is the uh, feature that I like. Yeah, one of the platform's most impressive features uh, is uh, its ability to add thoughtful and targeted questions to specific video frame. By doing so, you can uh, guide your students through the materials and ensuring that they absorb and retain uh, key concepts. So other than using their own created videos, uh, sometimes teachers we as teachers often seek out external video resources to supplement uh, our own teaching materials. However, uh, sometimes uh, we found that uh, the videos may not always align perfectly with uh, the lesson objectives and sometimes only a small portion of the video uh, is relevant to what we need. Yeah. <clears throat> so uh, additionally, Research also suggests that students uh, have a limited uh, attention span and videos that are too long may not be effective in maintaining their focus. Yeah? And to address this issue, Edpuzzle uh, has a solution that allows teachers to easily trim videos. As you can see on the slide here, uh, you can trim videos uh, to extract only the most important parts for uh, the lesson. Yeah? So by trimming unnecessary uh, portions of the video, teachers can ensure that their students stay engaged, focus throughout the lesson. Yeah? This uh, not only saves time for both the teacher and the students, but also helps to ensure that uh, the video content is um, directly relevant to the uh, learning objectives. Okay. In addition 
to inserting questions is now. At Puzzle also provides a feature for teachers in uh, to insert notes yeah, to into videos. This is uh, interesting yeah, when we, we can insert notes because notes can be used to provide additional uh, context. Yeah. Highlight, we can also highlight uh, important concepts or we can uh, prompt students to think more deeply about the material uh, being presented. So here teachers can easily insert notes at any point in the video timeline, like the question just now, and customize the text and uh, the formatting also yeah, to suit their needs where students can then access these notes at any time during uh, the video playback. Okay, This feature is particularly useful for, for providing supplementary information that may not be uh, directly related to the quiz questions, but can still help uh, students understand the material better. So for example, uh, a teacher might insert a note into a video on Mm, for example, the, the topic of climate climate change and highlighting the significance of a particular graph or chart eh, being presented. Okay, this is the next feature that I like also, where uh, it puzzle allows uh, teachers to track student progress and performance by using the analytics. So as a teacher, you can uh, identify areas where they may need additional support or reinforcement. So by utilizing this feature, yeah, it teaches, you can keep an eye on whether the students have finished watching videos or not. So like I said earlier, teachers also can assess their score and note the areas where pupils or students struggle uh, so that appropriate action might uh, be taken eh, uh, to address the issue. This is the whole class view of the quiz analytics. You can see the teacher can track the progress of the entire class from this, uh, this uh, dashboard. Okay, so I think uh, what I have presented just now was about the features of Edpuzzle uh, that teachers can utilize to support flipped learning. Now I'm going to share how flipped learning supported uh, activities can be done for back uh, to back, uh, sorry, back to school, back to school week, yeah, sorry. Okay, in Malaysia, schools had uh, lately been directed to reserve the first week of the new academic year for non-academic activities, yeah, meaning there were no classes. Uh, alternatively, the <coughs> first week consisted of uh, physical, emotional, spiritual, social, and intellectual development activities. It was the first time such an effort had been implemented at the beginning of a school year in Malaysia. But uh, uh, taking into consideration, sometimes it is pretty difficult for teachers to consider what activities they can offer kids. Uh, I believe at Puzzle uh, can aid teachers in achieving this objective. Yeah? And if teachers uh, plan to flip their lessons in the following week, at Puzzle can also support out of class session. And I would like to share some uh, activities where teachers can uh, utilize at Puzzle for back to school uh, back to school week. And I would like to say that while the activities uh, that I'm suggesting now uh, are good at starting point, but you uh, don't be afraid to experiment with different approaches and activities to find what uh, works best for your students. And by being creative and adaptive in your teaching practices, actually you can ensure that your students are engaged and motivated uh, to learn, yeah? So on the screen now is the flip learning setting, okay? I put it in graphic, okay, infographic. Flip learning can be effective uh, way to engage students in their learning. So by dividing the lesson into two parts, teachers can create a more dynamic and interactive uh, classroom experience. The first part involves uh, what we say, an at-home session where students can uh, access teaching and learning content. Yeah? While the second part involves an in-class session where students carry out arts activities. 
like rating, evaluating, analyzing, and applying uh, lower order thinking skills are eradicated uh, at home. Yeah? So we don't have to think about uh, those two skills. Teachers now focusing more on uh, higher order thinking skills in the classroom. Okay? So let's take a look at classroom rules. For example, eh? as a class teacher, for example, some perhaps uh, some of you are class teachers, you can utilize a puzzle <clears throat> to introduce classroom rules in an innovative and engaging way by creating a video <clears throat> that outlines the classroom rules and regulations and turning it into an uh, ad puzzle quiz can be uh, an effective way to ensure that students understand the expectations, your expectations and guidelines for the class. Yeah? And once the rules have been established, you can use hot-based activities to reinforce them in the classroom. For example, uh, as a teacher, you could have uh, students work together to create classroom contract, for example, yeah? uh, where they outline the rules they will follow throughout the year. And I believe this can help students feel a sense of ownership over the rules uh, that they have created and agreed upon and encourage them to take responsibility for their actions in the classroom. Okay? And perhaps I can suggest another activity that can be done in the classroom, which is the classroom uh, scavenger hunt, where this activity can help students uh, become familiar with uh, their classroom rules by having them locate different rules. They learn from the video at home and then uh, the rules can be uh, posted on the walls around the classroom and it may result uh, as an interactive, uh, engaging learning environment for the kids. Yeah. Okay, that's about a class teacher, how you can utilize uh, at puzzle and flip learning. What about language classes? Okay, if you are teaching language classes, <clears throat> perhaps you can use at puzzle to uh, create icebreaker activities by introducing a little bit about yourself and do a short book review. For example, I am I teacher, I am Mr. Faisal, so I'm doing a book review. So I record myself and put it into a puzzle. And after that, when they have uh, watched with some questions and answer all the quiz, as an assignment, teachers can request students to prepare for a book review session that will happen in class. Where can I insert this instruction? Uh, by using the notes features uh, of uh, a puzzle after uh, uh, in, in the end of my video. Yeah? Okay, so in class, what will happen? In class, based on the video they watch, students will talk about themselves and do, also, uh, do uh, a book review. And I believe uh, by doing a book review as a start for a language class, uh, it can be an effective way <coughs> Sorry, um, uh, to warm up students' language skills and prepare them for more advanced uh, language learning activities in the following week. Yeah. Okay, another example that I can think about and I can suggest is the science subject. Before we teach science, uh, it is important to explain to the kids uh, the importance of safety in school. Saf sorry, safety in uh, school science lab, I mean, yeah, because Science experiments uh, can involve hazardous materials and processes that may pose a risk of injury or, or harm it not, uh, if not handled properly. Yeah? In order to prevent accidents and uh, injuries, uh, it is really crucial for students to understand the importance of uh, following safety rules and guidelines in the science lab. Right? To ensure safety in the school science lab, Teachers can use a puzzle to create a video that covers all the necessary lab safety guidelines. And this video later should be made compulsory for all students to, uh, who plan to use the lab. And students should watch the video <coughs> and pass a safety quiz with an acceptable score. Teacher decide on that. And before being granted permission to enter the lab. Yeah, so they, they need to have some kind of acceptable score before they are allowed to use uh, certain uh, things in the uh, lab. So by doing this, actually teachers, we can ensure that uh, everyone in the lab uh, is aware of uh, safety protocols and minimize the risk of accident. Yeah. Okay, for physical education, okay, just like teaching science, 
physical education also requires adherence to uh, certain rules and guidelines as well yeah to ensure that student uh, to ensure uh, students to understand the rules and regulations and using sports equipment teachers can adopt an interactive and engaging approach so in the first week of class what teacher can do is they can create an a puzzle video that explains the rules and regulations for borrowing and using sports equipment so this video can be assessed by students from their homes and it can serve as a foundational resource for the rest of the semester so once students have watched the video when they are in class teachers can bring them to the sports equipment room in school uh, in order to assess the understanding of the rules given in the video yeah? so this can be done through a series of interactive activities such as role playing perhaps in a few scenarios or group discussions or perhaps a checklist so they can tick whatever they have uh, the rules that they have learned or in addition teachers uh, can assign if we want to make it more uh, more fun perhaps uh, you can uh, ask the students to do a task like uh, creating a pamphlet or infographic about uh, the rules for borrowing and uh, using sports equipment so this activity actually will encourage students to internalize the rules and regulations and provide them with a sense of ownership also uh, and responsibility towards the proper usage of the equipment like I said uh, just now and I also believe by following these simple steps teachers can ensure that their students have a solid foundation in the rules and regulations um, of using sports equipment yeah? so uh, which is I think essential for uh, safe and effective physical education experience for the kids. Okay. Uh, so, uh, those are some activities that I think are useful for back to school uh, week, probably. Uh, you already have it uh, been implemented uh, recently. If you have any wonderful ideas to share with us, uh, I would be very pleased to hear that as well. So Imran, I think I now open this session for some suggestions or questions. Sure. Thank you, Dr. Faisal. Thank you so much for uh, detailing all of that. I think I especially enjoyed uh, the ideas regarding science, regarding physical education of how you can use flipped learning. I've never really thought about the use of flipped learning in physical education, you know, it's something that people think, okay, you have to be there with the students, you have to exercise with the students, but uh, I think you managed to show us uh, slightly different perspectives. So uh, participants, attendees, if you have a question, you have a suggestion, uh, do key them into the chat box. And uh, while we wait for some of your questions, some of your suggestions, uh, we will also be asking Dr. Faisal some of our own. Uh, May, do you have a question to ask Dr. Faisal? Probably I will, I will start. Um, Dr. Faisal, I think the presentation today um, prepares teachers on their readiness in terms of um, using flipped learning in class. Let's talk about another angle, which is the students' readiness. Like, uh, how, do, how, how do you think teachers will know that if their students are ready for flipped learning? Um, is, is, is it a trial and error? Or is there any like, best practices that has been put in place? Okay, um, actually, before we uh, proceed, uh, if you are interested to, I mean, the teachers are interested to uh, proceed with flip learning, they can first uh, try it out first. They can flip only, uh, not the whole lesson, not all the classroom, but only a small component of uh, the curriculum, a unit perhaps. They can try with that first. Okay, if uh, it is uh, successful, they can proceed. Uh, with a bigger portion. If uh, it is not uh, really successful, they can always reflect and improve where, wherever it is necessary. Because uh, I agree with you that uh, teacher, uh, students' readiness also is important and also the parents. Uh, teachers can also inform uh, the parents uh, that uh, uh, they, can, they, they would like to try a flipped learning approach uh, to enhance students' uh, learning, teaching and learning experience. Uh, perhaps in the first week they can have a kind of briefing with uh, uh, with the parents, so they can uh, uh, tell the parents that uh, after this I'm going to uh, try flipped learning. So what? Then please tell. Uh, uh, so 
please let uh, your kids uh, be prepared okay at home with something something, something all the rules yeah? mm. okay. okay um i think Imran, do you want to share the results of the poll that we just right. we just yep. so some of us uh, some of the attendees just joined in uh, at the right at mm. the start of the webinar we issued a poll question and the poll question is whether you have tried flipped learning before so uh, what's going on here is that about half of the attendees here have tried it before and half oh. have not. Uh, so Dr. Faisal, thanks for sharing us the basics right at the very start of the sharing. You explained what flipped learning is. You gave some examples of how it can be used. So especially for these teachers who have not used it before, what is one thing they can do today or tomorrow to get themselves ready for flip learning. Maybe they want to try it next week. Maybe they want to try it next month. But what is one small thing that they can do today or tomorrow? Okay. What I can say is if you like to uh, try flip learning, just pick one topic or component of your curriculum where the, you think uh, your students struggle the most. Okay, pick on that part and try out uh, small components of that uh, curriculum to implement flipped learning and start producing your own uh, uh, video content and post it on YouTube or other uh, platform of video hosting and try with that puzzle. Post some questions eh, uh, before they come to class and then in class you try out uh, to, you need to figure out some high order thinking skills activities for your students. So the most important thing is uh, start small first, okay, and uh, find the part that your uh, students struggle the most. Right. Thank you for that, Dr. Faisal. I think that's the that's the thing that more teachers need to do. Uh, so for our attendees, I used to be a teacher as well. I taught chemistry for fifteen years, and I think. Uh, that's exactly what we need to do more. We need to just, just try something small. Uh, it could be a three-minute video. It could be using your phone, your camera phone to record yourself explaining something on a worksheet. As long as you get started, you will learn more, you will share more with others, and then it gets easier, it gets better. The quality of the teaching and learning will also improve. Um, so for our attendees, I've just launched a second poll question. So uh, I think the title might be shortened. The question is supposed to be, what are your concerns or difficulties about flipped learning? So go ahead. You can choose more than one if you want. And uh, we'll talk about what is the most common response here. Because if this is something you want to try, let's be realistic here. It's not going to be all rainbows and butterflies. There will be some challenges there will be some difficulties. And so if we get to talk about the difficulties now, then you know it is something that we can uh, exchange ideas about and make it easier for everybody. So go ahead, look for the poll uh, in your Zoom application. And uh, we'll talk about maybe what is the most popular choice. All right, so let's just wait for a bit more. And we'll talk about... Okay, so let's take a look at the results. We will talk about, firstly... Wow the lack of access to resources by students. Perhaps uh, you might be concerned as a teacher, do my students have a device? Do my students have fast internet access at home? Shall we talk about this one first? Dr. Faisal, what do you think about this concern? Okay, the, yeah, I agree with that lack of access to resources. Yeah? But uh, we can think of uh, alternative if we don't have the... Uh, luxury of uh, what you call that uh, facilities at school. Uh, we just think on the concept of uh, flipped learning. Okay, tools come later. The concept is the basic concept is the content will be delivered at home. Okay, in the class we have uh, ample time uh, to do higher order thinking skills. No matter what kind of technology that you have, whether it's low tech or high tech, it doesn't matter as long as uh, the technology can support the learning. Yeah. Uh, maybe the least, for example, for example, you have uh, notes uh, for your students to uh, review at home, then uh, in a uh, in the form of printed papers. So why not? You can uh, start small with that. Okay, uh, technology will come later, so you don't have to worry about lack of students access to resources and so on, uh, which is the uh, the main concern of our audience uh, today. 
I can also suggest um, if you are worried about the student access to these resources at home, then there is a concept where you can bring flipped learning into the classroom. So mm -hmm. that is something called the in-class flip. So yeah. for example, more and more schools are getting access to, uh, access to devices where it is perhaps a shared pool of devices and the students are accessing these video lessons, these resources in the class. So you might be thinking, um, if they are in the class, then what am I doing as a teacher? So recall that Edpuzzle has this function where you're able to track the progress. So imagine this, the students are going through the video lessons and then the teacher, it's not that you're sitting back and drinking kopi, but you are tracking what their responses are. And when you see, okay, there's a small group of students, they need to uh, revisit this concept. So, you know, during the, the lesson itself, you can attend to this small group while the other ones who are doing okay, they can continue with the video lesson. So that kind of solves the issue of uh, them not having fast internet or their own device at home. Yeah, I agree with you, Imran. Uh, perhaps teachers can set up a station where uh -huh. uh, students mm -hmm. can access <coughs> the materials before they proceed with uh, other activities in the classroom itself. So it's flipped in the class, yeah. Um, any short comments about the other two responses, the lack of discipline or the amount of preparation? Okay, um, okay, about that lack of students' discipline to, com to complete the pre-class work, yeah. Uh, perhaps you, uh, we can do something like this. Uh, like I said just now, there's a station where those who have not viewed the video, they before they uh, join uh, the rest of the class uh, doing a project, uh, some kind of projects, for example, they need to watch that first. So, so I think if students, they really like the project, they will force themselves to watch uh, the videos at home before, uh, before, they, can, uh, before they can join uh, the classroom activities. Yeah? So we as teachers must be creative on, on, on designing our lesson. And the amount of teacher preparation needed, yep, I agree with that. Uh, this is also a valid concern because in doing in, in prepare in prep, preparing uh, materials, uh, it takes time. Yeah, but once uh, but it's only happened in the initial stage of preparing the lesson. Once we have uh, created one video, we can use it uh, again and again uh, in the future. You don't have to uh, create the video again unless the content is uh, no longer valid for the students. Okay, that's my that's my comment on those concerns, Imran. And I think the best part about that is that you can use the same video for different classes. And if yeah. you use Edpuzzle, uh, it doesn't have to be exactly the same. For example, for a certain class, it can be slightly longer. For another class, it can be slightly shorter as you have shared with us the trimming uh, function in Edpuzzle. Functions. And of course, yeah. you can also set the questions to be slightly different. Maybe there's a class that is stronger. So the kind of questions can be a bit different from another class, which you think uh, needs more fundamentals in the uh, classroom learning. Yeah. Okay, so yeah. once again, uh, we are looking forward to your questions. And one question just came in uh, and it says here, are there reward-based options? Uh, for example, positive reinforcement for pupils in attempting tasks on Edpuzzle that teachers can use. So are there reward-based options for pupils in attempting tasks on Edpuzzle that teachers can use? Okay, I think uh, we don't have any, it, correct me if I'm wrong, eh, uh, me. <laughs> uh, I, I'm not sure whether you have the features uh, now or not, but uh, previously, I don't think we have any badging system, any badging system, the kind of uh, reward that we can give the students, right? Uh, but uh, for me, if we don't have that kind of uh, system or features, perhaps we can reward the students when uh, they are in class, eh? yeah. not during the uh, video quiz. Do you have to say anything me, about this? I, I think using the um, analytics function that Edpuzzle has, the teachers will be able to then uh, reward or um, provide positive reinforcements in the classroom itself because the mm -hmm. teachers are able to monitor the analytics of the students or see the analytics of the students. Yeah. 
And uh, because there are small little features in Fuzzle, for example, uh, you can put in hyperlinks in the questions. You can put in hyperlinks in the notes and, and so on. Uh, let's say you are interested in uh, positive reinforcement, right? You, you can link something. So for example, if you get the question correct, uh, your feedback can pop up such that when they click on the link, they, you, they can be taken to, you know, like a reward video. Okay, you know, well done for answering this question. Uh, here's a short video about, you know, something interesting that they can watch. So because of all this, I think uh, it is up to the teacher's creativity regarding how they want to use all these features for gamification, for rewarding completion of tasks, and so on. You're very welcome, Puvana. So, um, Dr. Faisal, any last words regarding flip learning? Any words of encouragement to our teachers who might want to try flip learning or may they want to continue doing flip learning? Okay. Um... I would like to say that uh, now it teaches in Malaysia are really uh, engrossed in PBD or uh, school-based assessment. Uh, I think a puzzle uh, can provide you uh, with suitable, uh, uh, is the best platform I would say for you to implement PBD because it keeps all the records of your quiz and you can download that uh, <clears throat> student's progress as uh, an Excel worksheet format. Yeah? Uh, so you can keep uh, as the evidence of the, the student's progress. So perhaps you can try at puzzle for your PBD as well. So that's one. So start small. The yeah. keyword is start, start, start small. small. Yeah, start small. All right. Um, so thank you once again, Dr. Thank Faisal, you. for having spent your afternoon with us. And I would also like to thank all the teachers who chose to spend your afternoon with us today. Uh, we hope that you manage to get one or two things uh, that you are able to find useful for your journey in technology-enhanced teaching and learning. And uh, as all three of us have mentioned, uh, the two magic words for today would be to start small. So it doesn't really matter how awesome your flipped learning lesson is tomorrow because it's not about that. It is about starting today, starting tomorrow, and building that, learning from each other, and uh, being better educators, especially for our students. So thank you once again. And if you are interested to try out Edpuzzle, uh, there is a link, sorry, there is a QR code, there is a URL that you see on your screen. So scan the QR code, key in the URL on your devices, and uh, start an account, and get started creating awesome video lessons for your students. We have been yeah. May, Imran, and of course our honored guests, honorable guests, are Dr. Faisal. Thank you, everyone, once again. Thank we'll you, see all. you soon. Yeah. Goodbye. Thank you, Bye. all. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.